In this problem, we're going to consider the case where the current in the wire gradually decreases, and that's going to induce a current in this square wire over here. And we want to find the total amount of charge that passes through the wire. So we're going to use uh, Faraday's law, and Faraday's law tells us that the EMF, or the voltage, is equal to the negative of the change in, change in flux with respect to time. So in this case, let us take the flux that is coming out of the page as positive. And so in this case, using the right angle, that means if we get an EMF that is positive, that means there is going to be charge flowing in this direction. If it's negative, then there's going to be charge flowing in the negative direction, in the, uh, in the clockwise direction. So first of all, let us come up with a formula for flux. So as always, we start off with this formula. And first of all, what is the magnetic field? Well, the magnetic field around this uh, wire over here, again, use your right-hand rule, it's going to go around like this. So it's going to come out of the square over here. And the magnitude is going to be equal to mu i divided by 2 pi r. So where r is going to be, so r is going to be the distance uh, from the point you're measuring uh, with the wire. So let's say you're looking for the magnetic field at this point, and then this distance will be r. And so uh, using this, we can find the amount of flux. So let's just substitute this in. So our dA, uh, again, you can imagine there be kind of like two axes. So the first axis is this r axis over here. The second axis is this uh, width axis. I'll just call this y. So we have for our dA, so essentially we're integrating across this square region. So we have dy dr. And uh, r is stretches from s all the way to s plus a. And for r, uh, for y, it stretches from 0 to a. So essentially this draws out this entire square over here. And uh, also don't forget that, that dA is actually a vector. And in our case, we've chosen it so that the magnetic field and the dA is pointing in the same direction. So dA is going to be perpendicular to this square over here, the surface of this square over here. And the magnetic field at this point is also going to be pointing upwards. So they're both parallel to each other. That's why I can take away the dot product and then directly substitute it dy dr. And uh, so the bounds of s to s plus a, that should be for dr instead. So I should order it like this. And uh, let's integrate out uh, dy first, because there are no y terms inside, so all we get is a. And then integrating with respect to r, we have a 1 over r, so that becomes a natural log of r. And so in the end, we know that the flux is going to be given by mu i a divided by 2 pi natural log s plus a divided by s. So uh, now we want to find the change in flux, the negative of the change in flux, and this is going to be the EMF. So directly substituting everything in. So uh, everything else is just a constant. So all of these are constants, so it's not affected by the derivative. The only thing that's changing is i. So we have a di dt over here. And as you've seen, i is equal to uh, 1 minus alpha t times this i over here. This is a constant. So it's kind of confusing. I'm using i and i over here. So this i over here is the constant. This is the i, uh, the function with respect to t. So if you take di dt, all you get is, so this is alpha, is negative alpha i. So the negatives, they cancel out. So we get mu a alpha i divided by 2 pi natural log s plus a over s. And uh, I'm going to use the V equals to IR law over here. So EMF is essentially voltage. So this I over here, uh, so I'm, uh, I know I'm using a bit of confusing notation, but uh, I just put a prime over here. So this I prime over here will be the uh, current that is going to be induced in this Y over here. So I prime times R, R is the resistance in this wire. So with this formula, we can find the amount of uh, current that is running through the square wire, which is given by this formula. 
And now going back to the original problem, we need to find the total amount of charge that is running up, uh, through the wire uh, after the current drops from its initial value down to zero. And we do that by integrating integrating i times dt, because i is just the change in charge divided by uh, dq dt. So if we take i multiplied by dt, that's the instantaneous amount of charge that passes through, and then we integrate it, we will get the total amount of charge that passes through a given point for the length of time that we are integrating across. And the in length of time that we're going to integrate across is going to be 0 to 1 over alpha. So only from 0 to 1 over alpha is there going to be current running along this wire. Once it exceeds 1 over alpha, the current drops at 0, there's no more change, so there is no more uh, induced, uh, e induced EMF. So there will be no more charge running along the wire. So for our t, we're going to integrate from 0 to 1 over alpha. So this should be i prime. So now let's just uh, carry our i prime over, over here. And you see that there are no t terms over here. So with we, if we integrate this with respect to dt, all we have to do is just to, uh, oh yeah, all that's going to happen is that we're going to multiply this whole thing by 1 over alpha. And so that is actually our answer. We just take away the alpha. So let's just uh, copy this out. So in the end, the final answer turns into something like this. So I forgot to put the r in the denominator, but this should be the resistance down here times natural log 1 plus a over s. So this is the total amount of charge. And then you see that this answer is positive. And so as the convention goes, that means the total amount of the charge that is running along this wire is running along in this direction. So uh, because we're taking uh, outwards as uh, uh, flux, uh, the magnetic field that's coming outwards as positive flux, that's why if we get a positive answer, that means the charge is going in this direction which is a counterclockwise.